From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Ambarian in Helena. Montana lawmakers are going to consider a big change to the state's recreational marijuana system. I'll let you know why they're considering keeping the market closed to new applicants, at least for another two years. And when you vote in the coming midterm elections, you will also be choosing how you want congressional investigations to shape up. See what each party is likely to do. That's coming up at 5.35 or 6.35. Hey, don't 6 take us back I another said hour. 5 I, I am Ron Burgundy? No, I am Chet Lane. <laughs> Matt, Matt Elbow with you here on this uh, Thursday. It's 6.30. It is. Don't freak out. It's 6.30. No, uh, you guys, um, <laughs> you know, the positive is we're stepping outside. And you can almost breathe. Almost. Yeah. The it, air, it's slowly getting better. Air quality is improving. It may yeah. not be perfect yet, but we're working our way in that there. direction. Getting uh, temperatures are a little cool this morning. A lot of areas needing uh, jackets as you step outside. 32 in West Yellowstone. That's one of those areas. Chilly and Anastasia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now sitting at 37. 40s for much of the area. Today could be a little bit more on the damp side. As you get into the afternoon, it may not be widespread, but we are looking at the possibility of some scattered showers, even some thunderstorms on into the evening. But I think that it's um, more toward the evening and overnight that we see the heavier rain in the Bozeman area. Butte may likely see some showers for the afternoon. They'll be widely scattered across the other area, but we're changing to a much more active but cooler pattern. We're going to break it all down for you coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. 631 now. Some legislators are proposing changes to the state recreational marijuana laws. Tim's Jonathan Amberian explains how the changes could be where pot is purchased. On Tuesday, lawmakers on the Economic Affairs Interim Committee finalized their bill aimed at cleaning up some of the laws around recreational marijuana sales in Montana. Many of the changes were small and technical in nature, but one major change added on Tuesday would delay the entry of new licensees into the adult use market until 2025. Since the start of recreational marijuana sales in January, only businesses that were already operating in the medical marijuana system before the passage of Initiative 190 in November 2020 have been able to get licenses. That restriction is set to expire at the end of June 2023, but Senator Jason Ellsworth, a Republican from Hamilton, suggested extending it two more years, saying he doesn't believe the state needs more licensees and that leaders need longer to see how the system is working before adding more businesses. Again, we're in the infancy of all this. We've already seen a lot of holes in this. This just gives us more time to see how these changes are actually going to take effect. Um, and I think we need to err on the side of caution here. Committee members approved adding that change to their bill, though some expressed concerns about the last-minute nature of it. Now the proposals will go before the full legislature during the 2023 session. Pepper Peterson, CEO of the Montana Cannabis Guild and Industry Group, supports extending the moratorium. He says existing marijuana businesses haven't had a chance to operate under their final regulations yet. The administrative rule process, which defines the, you know, how the law is interpreted, is not over for the first set of rules. So before another legislative session changes more rules, we'd like to see those finalized with this same group of people. On Tuesday, the committee also supported adjusting the effective date of the moratorium. That would allow some medical-only businesses that started after the 2020 election to begin selling adult-use marijuana. One of the biggest changes that had already been included in the proposed bill draft was clarifying some language in the law to make clear that Montana tribes had access to combined use licenses that they could use to start and expand their own marijuana businesses. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. 634 now. There's new information on that fire that injured two employees at RY Timber in Livingston on Monday. In a statement, RY General Manager Dan Richards says, quote, Monday morning, a few minutes before 6 o'clock, an employee was starting up equipment in the planer. It is suspected that dust in the air was ignited by a spark, causing a fire that sent this employee to the Livingston Hospital. And then a few hours later, he was flown to the University of Utah Burn Center in Salt Lake City with burns to his arms, hands, and face. That accident is under investigation. Now, the planer facility was destroyed. Company says plans are underway to rebuild as soon as possible. RY Timber has started a donation drive for the injured employee. You can find out how to make a donation by visiting our website. And it seems almost every local business needs to hire more people. Now, staffing shortages are taking a toll at the county level. Gallatin County Clerk of District Court's office temporarily 
temporarily reducing its hours. County Clerk's Office handles tasks such as record keeping for district court, marriage licenses. Clerk of the District Court Sandy Earhart tells us beginning next Monday, that's the 19th, the office will be closed at three daily to leave uninterrupted time for employees to get processing done. Office which normally has 14 people currently down four and at the end of the month another two are leaving so it'll be down eight. Earhart says the salary has increased five percent. She also says it's hopeful, she's hopeful the office will be filled up very soon. 635 now, the midterm election less than eight weeks away with control of Congress on the line. That impacts everything from health care to your taxes in the years to come. In this politically charged time, it also impacts various investigations from the former president to the current president's son. Our Joe St. George takes a look at how your vote will impact how Congress spends its time and who will face the most scrutiny. Time. How do you spend it? A workout, on the bike, social media for hours? In the words of a Greek philosopher, time is the most valuable thing a man can spend. The reality is whoever controls this place after this year's midterm election will impact how members of Congress spend their time. And yes, that includes who gets investigated. Well, if you're looking at the folders of possible congressional inquiries based off your vote this year, Democrats are promising continued investigations into the oil and gas industry over profits, as well as airlines and canceled flights. Of course, of all the folders available, Democrats have made clear for years that former President Donald Trump is the focus of most of their investigations. Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Democrats keep control of the House this election. The January 6th congressional inquiry is poised to continue and it could potentially expand to include classified documents. However, if Congress flips to Republican control, as is currently predicted by some, the political investigations in our country will change. We have far more evidence to share with the American people. That January 6th committee could shut down entirely or its focus be altered by putting close friends of Mr. Trump on it. The committee could start to look at the FBI and why a raid at Mar-a-Lago was ordered last month. In recent weeks, Republican leaders in the House have also signaled other folders they plan on creating. Take, for instance, Hunter Biden, the president's son. Republicans have said they would like to look into his past financial ties and business practices. Dr. Anthony Fauci has a folder, too, even though he is set to retire soon. Any investigation would likely focus on the rationale of COVID lockdowns. Other investigations are expected to include tech companies like Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram. Republicans have concerns over what is getting censored online. So remember, your vote in the coming weeks impacts a lot, from the environment to health care. It also affects who faces scrutiny and the time Congress spends. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Uh, meantime, time keeps ticking away. Later today, there's a summit at the White House on the topic of fighting extremism in America. The number of hate groups across the country has fallen in the past two years, but the Southern Poverty Law Center, that's an often cited group that tracks reports of hate groups and crimes, says certain hate groups are growing in size. Chris Stewart looked at what it takes to stop this by speaking to someone who spent years in a hate group. Is that you? That, that is me. That wasn't me. It seems like you still feel like there's an emotional reaction that you get when you see it. Because a little, little disbelief. I still, I still can't believe that, you know what I mean? It's, it's just hard to, to, to grow. I don't know. T.M. Garrett was born in Germany, raised by a single mother who he says suffered from alcoholism. Today, he acknowledges he could have taken a different path that didn't involve hate. And it started first with anti-Semitic and racist jokes in the schoolyard. It's just very unintentional. I don't know to play it down. I know these jokes were racist, they were anti-Semitic, but not for the sake of hating people. It was for the sake of getting attention. And at the end, I became a Holocaust denier, anti-Semite. I was the leader of a KKK group in Europe. Neo-Nazi skinhead musician toured all over Europe and in the U.S. He says it's been more than 20 years since he was the person in these pictures. But he sees hate groups recruiting young people struggling with life today. All of a sudden they have these people there and it seems they're understanding. They're like, oh, we know how you feel. I've been there. 
It's why he works to help people leave extremist groups. It took me years to become a full-blown anti-Semite and believe in the conspiracy theories. If you walk 10 miles into a forest, guess what? It takes you 10 miles to walk out. You know we're recording this, right? Yo, that's fine. Yeah. Romy Munns is a former white supremacist prison gang member. TM has worked with him since he left prison in 2019. TM has helped him find tattoo shops to cover up most of the racist tattoos once on his body. This is video TM gave us of that work being done. Not only is my past embarrassing, um, it's not who I am anymore. And when you walk around with that and people look at you, it's like the shame. It's shameful. TM says covering tattoos is just one part of de-radicalizing the people he works with. Changing views can take months and years. Just leaving a hate group doesn't make you an anti-racist all of a sudden. You have to not only to get your head out of the hate, you also have to get the hate out of your head. I asked him how he could expect people to show compassion to those with past beliefs so hurtful. He took me to meet his business partner, Ray Johnson. Oh my God. Ray is a former street gang member, now pastor. Because we have the same similarities of, of uh, want to see change and help people get out of the former life. Me, former gang, him, former uh, uh, clansman. Perhaps an unlikely friendship. First meeting us and they come is overwhelming. Ray meets with people TM is helping leave extremist groups. Seeing people will have the opportunity to see the truth and whether they choose to stay that way is, is their choice. The most effective tool they say in the fight against hate is meeting it with humanity. Open the box, see the human being, have a conversation without blaming, without shaming, without guilt, making clear, I don't like your ideology, but you're a human being. I have no problem with you as a human being. <laughs>